Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making a cowboy casserole. Now we're going to go over the ingredients here real fast and then we're going to talk about some different ways to cook this and some different stuff you can put in it. But I got about a pound of ground beef, about six chopped up potatoes here, a can of tomatoes, they're just diced tomatoes, an onion, some spices, salt, pepper, garlic, about a cup of shredded cheese and a can of red kidney beans. I'm going to get my hamburger meat started because the very first step is to brown that ground beef. Okay, once our beef is browned, well, actually before it's browned, I'm gonna toss in my diced onions here with it and let them cook while my beef is browning. Now, you can cook this in a crock pot or your instant pot. If you were using one of the instant programmable pots, you'd wanna go ahead and put your onions and your spices and what I've got here is just about half a teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of regular black pepper, uh, about half teaspoon of minced garlic, and then I've got just the tiniest bit of sugar. Well, that's because I'm using tomatoes, and probably that sugar needs to be in my tomatoes, but I've already mixed it in here, so I'm going to go ahead and dump it in here. It'll be fine. Um, the spices are all to taste and they're all optional and when we get done you want to taste this and adjust them you know adjust the salt and the pepper and um, you might even want a little more sugar in it if you put sugar in it but anything that has tomatoes just a tiny bit of sugar really brings out the flavor and it cuts the acidity and makes it much better. And you're using it like a spice now, not a sweetener. So when you use sugar like that, keep that in mind and you know, don't overdo it because nobody really wants a dessert casserole for dinner. <laughs> and it will very quickly turn into that. Um, if you wanna do this in a crock pot, you still need to brown your ground beef like this if you're using your instant pot of course you can turn on the saute mode and you can brown your ground beef and your onions and stuff in your instant pot but like i said that's step number one now if you're doing it in a crock pot you're going to cook it for six or seven hours maybe even eight hours like if you wanted to go to work just turn it on low and set it for like eight hours in in the morning all you'd have to do is ground brown your ground beef and throw it in there and then you just layer all this stuff in your crock pot and when you get home from work it's ready or if it's on a weekend and you just feel like having a lazy day out sitting on the porch but you want dinner when you come in put it in that crock pot and turn it on low and let it sit there and cook seven, maybe even eight hours. It's gonna depend on how big your potatoes are. And if you're cooking it on the stove, it's also gonna depend on how big your potatoes are because the potatoes are really the only thing here that is not cooked. Now, if you don't have um, kidney beans, you can use any other kind of bean. You could use black beans, pinto beans, even northern beans or something will work in this. Or if you've got some leftover beans, put them in here instead of using a can of beans that cost a dollar. If you've got fresh tomatoes in your garden, dice you up a couple of cups of fresh tomatoes instead of buying the can. So, you know, use what you've got in this. And you could throw like a packet of taco seasoning or something like that in this. Use the same recipe, just toss that taco seasoning in there and make a totally different meal out of it sometime. And the cheese is kind of up to you. Like I said, I've got about a, a cup and you're gonna add that after everything else is cooked. Whether you do it in your crock pot or instant pot or you do it on the stove like I'm doing it here. Once everything is all cooked, 
then add the cheese and just let it sit there and melt. And you can pop this in the oven if you want to and brown your cheese, but that's not necessary. We've done a lot of stovetop casseroles and that's what I'm doing with this one today. I'm just making it on the stovetop. And pretty much any casserole recipe too, you can make it in your crock pot. You can also add your favorite hot sauce into this or some hot peppers, bell peppers, you know, chop them up and throw them in here with your hamburger meat. Just whatever flavors that you like. If you like this spicy, spice it up. Once your beef is cooked, you either want to drain it or maybe just adjust the amount of grease that's in your pan. Now the hamburger grease is gonna give your dish flavor, but the fat also adds calories and helps fill you up. Talked about that in a lot of videos. So if you have a lot of people to feed and you don't have a lot of food, you might wanna leave more of the fat in there because it is the part of the food that actually makes you feel full. But if you're on a diet, or especially if you're watching cholesterol and stuff, you would want to take it out as much as possible. So adjust that kind of, you know, depending on your dietary needs and your budget, how many people you're feeding, all that sort of stuff would affect how much grease you leave in here. This was fairly lean meat, but it still has quite a bit of grease, so I'm going to take some of it out just because I don't want it all in there. And if you're using an iron skillet, you might not want to try to hold it and drain it because that's a good way to spill your dinner. I've done that more than once. And that little paper towel trick there works really well, especially if maybe you don't want to take all the grease out of it. Okay, now that the beef is cooked, I'm going to layer this just like you would layer it in your Instant Pot or in your Crock Pot. I'm going to put my potatoes in next. And if you're on a low salt diet, don't put any salt in here until everything is cooked. Because you won't need as much if you wait until the end. Just kind of spread them potatoes out. And I didn't drain my beans, but if you're on a low salt diet, drain your beans and even rinse them because they will have some salt in them unless you buy the no salt ones or you're using leftover beans. And this is certainly a good recipe if you've got some leftover dried beans. And then I'm going to add my tomatoes in here. And the only liquid in here is from my beans and my tomatoes. If you you know, wanted to add some kind of stock to it, you could, but I really think it has plenty of flavor like this. Now, if you're doing the Instant Pot or the Crock Pot, put your lid on and set it for about eight hours, seven, eight hours. If you're doing it on the stove top, turn it down because you don't want it to burn and you are gonna check on it and probably have to stir it before it's done because on the stove in a skillet, it will burn before your potatoes get done. If you need this done really fast, I mean, if you're trying to get dinner on the table super fast, you can even use the canned potatoes in this, the whole ones or the diced ones. Uh, drain those though, you don't wanna put that water in it. It would be too much liquid in it. You can also, and what I do a lot of times, if I find ground beef on sale, even the stuff that they maybe have marked down, I will fry it all with a little salt and pepper and onion and maybe some garlic in it. And then I vacuum it and freeze it or wrap it up in small packages and freeze it. And you can take that already cooked ground beef out of your freezer and on a weeknight, you don't have to stand there and even saute the ground beef. You could just throw some cans with that ground beef in a pot, cover it up till it got hot take the lid off, add your cheese, cover it back up till the cheese is melted and you've got dinner. This is a, an excellent recipe for those weeknights when you wanna throw it in the crock pot or the instant pot and then go to work and come home and have dinner. 
It's a good recipe for a lazy weekend, and it's a good recipe for camping. I know a lot of folks are camping this summer. It's uh, an inexpensive vacation, and it was something that we have always enjoyed doing with the kids, and it's something that we all still do. Everybody in the family still likes to go camping and, you know, sit around in the evening, and, and something like this is just perfect for dinner when you're camping. So this is kind of one of those recipes that you can hang on to and use it just about any time. In the winter time, mix it up and put it in a casserole dish and put it in the oven and let it bake in the oven and sit there and smell it. But in the summertime, I definitely do the instant pot or the stove top, you know, just because you don't want to heat the house up. But it's a good recipe for any time and any beans will work, canned or fresh vegetables will work and just about any seasoning you want. And like I said, uh, some chili powder or a packet of taco seasoning or something like that will totally change it. If you want to make it the same thing that you've got the ingredients for, but make it taste different throw that in there and this would be really good served with a pan of cornbread or something which is a quick easy bread fairly inexpensive to make and as the wheat gets a little harder to get a hold of and the price of flour goes up I know the price of cornmeal is going to go up some but not as much as the flour I don't think so you know cornbread is a great alternative especially when you're having dinner and in the summertime, you know, you can do the hoe cakes and fry it in a pan instead of turning the oven on and heating the house up making cornbread. And we're probably going to do another fried cornbread recipe just because folks are having to make more bread. It's getting more expensive. And that's a really good pan bread that you don't have to heat the oven up to make. So we'll do that sometime here in the next month or so and show you how to do those. Now I do have up a hoe cake video, which is a fried cornbread, but it is a very, very basic recipe. And we'll do something different with that. Speaking of times like these, Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I know that it may be, a, well, I know it's getting worse, prices are going up, things are getting hard to find again, there's more and more shortages, and it is very hard to not be afraid, to not fear. But as Christians, the Bible tells us over and over again, God is with us. He's not going to fail us, and we should not be afraid. Fear is not of God. And as Christians, we should be showing the world now that it's going to be okay because our God is great and He supplies our needs. And now is the time for us to show the world that. Um, there's all kinds of, or well, there's a study that's all over the news that says that people, fewer people now believe in God than ever before. I'm not sure I believe that. Um, there's an old saying that says hard times build strong character and I think strong character comes from God and we are in one, one of those times now that puts us as Christians in a position to show the world what strong character is and to show the world what a strong God we serve. So don't lose this opportunity and don't let the current conditions shake your faith, take your peace, or make you afraid because we have nothing to fear. God is with us. He will not fail us and He will not forsake us. Okay, I've had this cooking on low for maybe 15 minutes now and I actually didn't have to stir it. I checked on it a couple of times. Um, Sometimes I do though, but it still has plenty of liquid in here, you can see. And what I did to check it is I just put my fork here kind of in the middle and made sure it wasn't sticking to the bottom. And if you do that, you can tell, you know, that there's nothing sticking and it's all right. You don't need to stir it. Now, if you've cooked this in your crock pot or your instant pot, it's going to look pretty much just like this. And you should be able to stick your 
potatoes with a fork and they should be done. That's, you, that's how you check your potatoes to see if they're tender. And that's really all you gotta do to make sure that your casserole's done. Now, if you put this in the oven, and I said in your crock pot or your instant pot, slow cooker low, seven, eight hours. In the oven, you wanna do 350 until your potatoes are tender. A tip that somebody else gave um, when I did the other potato casserole, they said when they're in a hurry, they throw their potatoes in the microwave for a couple of minutes before they cut them up to go in casseroles, and it speeds up that cooking time whether they're doing it you know, on the stove or crock pot or whatever, if they want it quicker, they just throw the potatoes in the microwave for a little while and get them soft. And you can do it in just a few minutes in the microwave. And again, it saves time cooking so it doesn't heat up the house as much. Um, you can leave it kind of more layered or you can stir it up a little bit. And I like to mix mine in just a little bit, you know, kind of get the, uh, tomatoes and the beans and the ground beef and the potatoes kind of mixed up a tad. Now you don't want to do this in your crock pot and stuff till in the end and you don't have to do it at all. But I like to do it before I add my cheese. If you're if you've got kids and you're feeding a big crowd and um, maybe your kids brought somebody home with them for dinner and you didn't know they were coming over, you can throw another can, even two cans of beans in here if you need to. Or, you know, if you've got leftover beans, you can use quite a few. It's just whatever you need to do, because you can see that's not overrun with beans there and it still has plenty of meat in it that it could season a couple of more beans than what's in there. And you can also throw extra potatoes in Potatoes are really filling, and if you've got a crowd to feed, they're a good choice. And you can also grow potatoes yourself pretty easy. And I think we're gonna do um, some alternate ways to grow potatoes and kind of show some of those on here, and ways that you could maybe keep them growing later in the season. If y'all are interested in seeing some of that, leave me a comment so we kind of got an idea how many people are interested in it. And if there's a lot of people that want to know how to do that, we'll, we'll do a video on it or maybe even two. Okay, once your potatoes are done, no matter what method you're using, go ahead and put your cheese on top. And if you were going to put this in the oven, I'd wait till the potatoes were pretty close to done before I put my cheese on top because it will um, kind of burn it even in the oven before the potatoes get done. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this stove eye off because like I've said before, this iron skillet on this gas stove, it'll burn on the bottom <laughs> really quick. And you just let that sit there for a minute until the cheese is melted. If you're doing it in your crock pot on low, it might take, oh, 15 minutes for it to melt, but it won't take too long. And in the oven, if you're doing it in the oven 350, you're probably gonna have to cook those potatoes at least an hour. If they're, you know, raw potatoes. Now, if you use canned potatoes, that'll speed it up and you could throw the cheese on it when you put it in there. But after about 45 minutes or so, take it out and then put the cheese on it and put it back in the oven for 350 until it's done. But this is a really easy, really good one pot recipe that's good for all four seasons and you can make it different ways depending on the season or what you're doing i mean if you're camping you'd certainly make it like this um, and in the summertime this this or the crock pot or instant pots how you're going to want to do it but in the winter stick it in the oven let it heat up the house smell it cooking and you know spice it up if you want to now seeing that, it only took about a minute to melt that cheese. And it's all gooey and bubbly. Oh my heavens. Something else you can do is you can make it more basic, like what I did here. And then you can add the hot sauce on the table. And that way the folks that don't like things super spicy and super hot, they can still eat it. And the folks that do want it super hot, super spicy, well, they can spice it up. And that's kind of always a good option if you're feeding a lot of people. 
and if you're just feeding one or two this is a good recipe because you can cut it down and you can use your leftover beans and you know one small fresh tomato and you know just whatever you got to kind of substitute these ingredients and make it work it's a very basic recipe so it's easy to cut it down and it's easy to use what you got I want to thank y'all so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. And I want to ask you to please click like and subscribe before you leave and share our videos with your friends. Until next time, remember to put God first.